Hey yo, what's up? You know what it is, the one and only trip with the G-O-D, and of course, welcome back to your other, other, other favorite YouTube show, Trip with God Explains It All. I am, of course, Gamers number one, Dope Man, the best in existence, the best in the business, Triple the G-O-D, just in case you forgot. And yo, 2014, we hitting the ground running. I, I find no other better way than to start the year off right, than to get hype for one of one of my going to the games I have been looking forward to for the past year and that's in Doku Busar 4 by taking a look at the game that got hooks in me and got me into the series and in Doku Busar across for the arcades and the PlayStation 2 which is the version we'll be taking a look at now the, 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 the story as there always is one is that the reason why I'm bringing you this today is you can thank you can thank the homie Shower because you know he got at me on Facebook like yo trip man yo I want to learn more about Sin Goku Star Cross like an awesome game I like to know more about it man when you gonna explain it all right now right the fuck now I'm explaining it right now I don't even want to waste any more time but yo Sin Goku Star Four hype is real am I gonna play it for the channel I don't know. But there is one, there is one bit of full disclosure I do want to get into before I get started because I want to keep it real. I would love to play Crosswise because I am a TM Revolution fan. The problem is, Sony Music Japan isn't a fan of you using their music. Um, YouTube won't give me ad revenue for this video if I use that music in the game, so you won't be hearing it. If you want to hear the intro because it's fucking awesome. Just go, when you're done with this, just type that search bar on the book to Goku Basar Cross Andro, and you'll hear some awesome TM Revolution, which also makes me question why the hell Heart of Sword isn't in J-Star's Victory Versus, but we'll talk about that on March 19th. So now, however, to Goku Basara Cross, because that's the game we're talking about today, and I'm waiting for something. Select your hero. Why yet, video game? I will soon select my hero because we're going to talk about all 12 of these wonderful characters. But before I do that, there's something I gotta discuss with the kids at home. So, game, you don't mind, I'm gonna handle this business right over here. Hey kids, how you doing? Then don't Koopa Star Cross. Everything you have heard about this game is true. This game broke as fuck. Let's just get that out the way. Let's just be honest. Is that your first the first thing you have to do in order to understand this game on any type of level is that we just gonna go for the meta game. The meta game of Sengoku Basara Cross is all about the infinite. Is that yes? Is that most people prefer to play the game straight up, which to, which also changes how good characters are because when you're playing straight up, your mentality is different on how you're trying to get from the start of a match. To win it from the start of a round to winning both matches to win it. But because in high level play, infinites are very legal, is that your mindset in a situation where infinites are legal is that you have to think about your character in this way. Is that there are three components to an infinite in the game. In most cases. It's you, the character you select, and the ended and how they all flowing together. And we will talk about ended when we get in the gameplay portion of the day. But you have to learn that that's the nucleus of the game. Is that it's you. It's you playing the game. Uh, trying to get to a point to understand that the character and their ended and how they work together. And how you're supposed to land an infinite in a high level play. But like I said though. The game changes when the game is played straight up. Because again your mentality from getting from winning from winning is different because you no longer have to concentrate on infinite because you have to play a you have to play a steady game from end to end instead of waiting for that one opportunity to either bounce your opponent left and right across the screen or make them fly straight to heaven because you know that's it. But with all of that being said, maybe we should talk about each one of these characters because you know it's a thing. And we'll start here with Nobunaga Oda. Oh, and his Indian, you know, Noe Hime, she's the girl at the top, and that's the dude, Renmaru Mori, but here's the thing. Nobunaga don't need them dogs. Because you want to know why? Because Nobunaga has a special which turns all of his normals on the ground into normals that can be dash canceled. 
want to know what happens when Nobunaga does a dash cancel off a of normal, you lose. That is what happens in high level play or if it's illegal, is that if Nobunaga hits you with a move or does anything on his move list that can juggle you where he's able to hit a normal where he can dash cancel, you have lost. I'm sorry, you've lost the round. If he lands it, you lose. That's it. Given the fact that even regardless of he can dash cancel off, off normals when he's powered up, is that he has some of the best projectiles in the game. So, not only is he a threat at rushdown range, he has some nice zoning tools at mid range, and he can spray poke at you with great fireball from, from full strength. Nobunaga, in an instance where an infinite from legal, is the complete and utter package because Unlike everybody else we're going to talk about on this roster, Nobunaga does not need his end gun at any sort, at any point to land an infinite in which you will be dragged into the sky in which time will run out and you will lose the round. Nobunaga Oda with infinite salon, and I will repeat this again, is the most dangerous member of this cast. That's it. In and out. There's nothing else to be said. Noble Dada Oda with infinite and wrong because he can dash cancel any normal powered up equals you lose. That's just the beginning, middle, and end of all of that. And that folks is Noble Naga Oda. Kote Yomi Hideyoshi and the Jinden Hanbei Tanaka. You like characters with command foes, dog? Right here. Toya Tomi's a monster. Be not and not excusing the fact that one of his moves includes power driving half of your sprites into the ground. He's dangerous. And this is before you add the before you add Hanbei to the mix, which as his engine does something for Toya Tomi that he necessarily really doesn't need for a great Toya Tomi player is that because Hanbei Hanbei big in attack is that he uses his um he uses his um his chainsaw to if he hits them at a certain angle level it brings him towards Toya Tomi which puts them in a juggle state where he's able to do many of his grabs and then you know throw you across the screen or power drive you halfway through the screen or a whole bunch of other things. However. Because we are talking about a video game that at high level play where a character can power up and dash cancel any normal Toya Tommy isn't quite the best character, but he's still very dangerous and I mean dangerous by probably being top five Is that Toya Tommy can hang with a, with a Nobunaga player. It's just that because he needs high base to set up for his infinite and stuff like that straight up though if Toya Tomi gets in and starts grabbing you, a great Toya Tomi player knows how to loop his, loop his air grab. It's a loop his air grab and he can do that a couple of times before damage scaling hit, before you just need to end the combo and just let it be. But Toya Tomi is a dangerous character, whether we talking about infinite or straight up. It's just the way it is, yo. Beast Mode, one of my, one of my favorite characters. He brought one of my favorite characters to play around with when I don't feel like playing as my other main. But you know, we'll get to that now. The One-Eyed Dragon, the master of the party, Dante Masamune, and Ka and Kojiro Katakura, baby. My favorite characters from Zenoku Bazaar. Period. I'm like, yo, what you want me to say about Dante? Badass. What you want me to say about Kojiro? Straight motherfucking death. What you want me to say? <laughs> now I'm getting a little hype, but seriously, yo. Dante and Kojiro are so of my favorite characters since they go to the star. I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm hype. I'm getting hype about talking about them because I'm just ready to play some Goku Bizarre 4 when they come in the mail. I'm just ready to play it. But let's talk about Sengoku Bizarre Cross and how this all works. What we're about to take a look at when we talk about when we talk about Dante and even when we talk about Yuki more after we're done is that what do these two characters represent a game people play now? You ever heard of a game called Persona 4 Arena? Is that, if you didn't, here's, here's your fun fact for the day. Is that this game spiritual, this game spiritual prequel is that game that's super and broken. 
You know the game? It's called Hokuto no King, you know. Oh, I want more King Deiru. You know where I bounce you around the screen and then I kick you in the face and punch you 100 times. That game. And a lot of the reason why this game is what it is is because the games are in the same in you. So, you know, things happen. But the point I'm trying to make is that when it comes to, like, the, 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 the comparison between this game and, like, Persona 4, is that Dante and Yuki Mora are both Shoto's in this case. And it's that they are very easy to use. And it's that 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 is a a philosophy that flows completely through both Persona 4 games. That the games are easy to pick up with characters that are easy to pick up. But it's a game that is very hard to master. And Shinjoku Bukar Cross is no different. But I really think that, you know, to give this a full history, a full history circle that I had to mention about how these characters are precursors to the Persona series. So now you know, and it's been and it's been triples long dick show. Anywho, that's a character. Can Goku the Star Cross? Um, yeah, like I said, he's a show though. He has a he has a lot of characters. He has well, a lot of characters. What the hell am I talking about? He is a very a very standard character. And at one point, he was considered one of the worst characters in the game before they discovered that he had a version of an infinite that then mostly everybody else in the cast had once they found those that him and Yuki Mura had. So, you know, that is a magical thing from 2008 that you might want to know. But I'm just really getting off traffic. Dante as a character. He has everything he needs to compete. He does. He has the everything he needs. He has an awesome engine in Kojiro, which helps him, which helps him extend combos. He had a lot of tools, which include everything that showed us you need, a fireball, an uppercut. There are no kicks because he uses six swords, you know, that's this thing. Is that he just has a lot of moves, a couple of wrecks and stuff like that. He just has a whole lot of tools to play, to play rush down and some mid-range. He has a fireball, a single fireball which is not really good for zoning at any range. So, you know, you may want to use it at some pressure, but you wouldn't want to rely on it as a crux and tool to actually, you know, wield any offense. But he does have it. But like I said, at one point, Dante was considered one of the worst characters in the game because at the time, that was he was one of the few characters that didn't have an infinite. But then once people found out he had an infinite, all of a sudden, this gangster play as, to play as the one-eyed dragon. It's a thing. I don't know, but that's who we are. That's who we are right now. Dante is a real cool character, you know, stuff like that. One of the best in the business, man. Yo, salute. Sonata, Yukimura, and his engines, Sarutobi Sasuke, and Takata Shingen. Now, he's the other half of the precursor to Persona 4 because he is also a shuttle. With an uppercut, not exactly a fireball, but more of a you know, more of like dashing attacks. But the thing about Yuki more in comparison to Dante, while Dante has some some nice strings that lead to damage, is that Yuki Moore's thing is that because because of his weapons, because of his weapon of choice, he is able to hit confirm from very long distances. Seriously. He is able, I think, he's like able to hit confirm dead or two characters away. That's not a cool character a lot of characters have in any fighting game where you can hit confirm normals into whatever you want to from two characters away and then given on top of that fact is that they are multi hitting normals so you have a character who can hit the first of them they're two characters away and they're multi hitting normals and then has and did have specials and supers that come out very fucking quickly and then the big giant rocket boot, which we will talk about later in this video. But my thing is this. Yuki Moore is a dangerous character, and just like Dante was considered one of the worst characters in the game, even though the fangirls love both of them, until they found that he had an infinite two that also required you bouncing someone from left and right across each wall in the stage until time's over. Also, Sasuke. Probably one of the best endings in the game because one thing I don't think I talked about which I should now and touch on is that a character, how I look at it in this game, is based off two things. Except in the case of No We're Not Older because as I have to remind you, he can he can power up and dash cancel any normal on the ground which makes him the best character in the game when infinites are involved. Anyway. 
RNG between a playable character and his or her endgame. It is key to everything any character in this game does. Because if we are talking about the game and we're talking about playing it straight up, is that endgames are very important to either playing the game with infinite legal or playing the game straight up because understanding about how my engine works with my game plan. So characters in this game are sort of locked into their tools combined with the engine and what they can do which gives them their best chance at winning. In the case of Yuki Moore, because I'll make an example out of him as I talk about it, is that Sasuke jumps out in midstream and then throws shuriken at niggas. That's what he does. That's, that's his engine attack, and as his engine levels up, is that he's able to throw more shuriken, and then he's able to do some kind of boots and no juicy type shit, which makes him do anything, which does this for Yuki more, which is very important to his gameplay, and playing the game straight up. Remember we talked about Yuki more has multi-hitting normals at a very far range, which far exceeds the range he should be in rushdown, where you should be doing normals? Sasuke gives him the opportunity to do a string, call out Sasuke, and then rush in the rush down range to continue that combo. Learning that basic stuff is synergy to Yuki Moore's game plan, whether you playing the game straight up or whether you trying to land an infinite switch. Told you the game was sick, man, and, and it just got sicker. The character, in my view, straight up is probably the best character in the game, is Oichi. With our Ingen, with our Ingen, Azai Nagamasa. But here's the thing, because if I'm talking about Nagamasa, let's just get him out the way now. Oichi really don't need Nagamasa to win. She don't. Because she has so many tools on her own, which includes two stances, including normal stance where she uses her weapon. And her, um, her, and her Hirake no Kaku, which we will now refer to as Shadow Mode, which is pretty much, you know, a weird combination between Eddie, between Eddie, Abba, and Zappa from Guilty Gear. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's part in all of that being the use of Shadow Mode. Abba being the sign of weird, you know, move speed between her two stances. And Zappa because of the weird stance she takes when she actually activates Shadow Mode, which we call Hirake no Hirake Nino Kaku, which we talking about we weren't gonna mention again, but I said it wrong the first time so I mentioned it again, so please do it nigga, thank you. Anyway, like I said, Oichi is the best character in the game because you know why? Because she's one of the two characters who has a 100% combo. Because there's one thing for a character to have an infinite in this game, there is another in, there is another instance where a character can kill another one outright. Oichi is one of the two characters in the game with that power, and if she gets the correct setup, she can kill you in the matter of seconds, and there's a reason why, and I'm about to mention it now. In Shadow Mode, is that Oichi does random status effects when she hits them with the move that incorporates the shadow, and that's moves that are in or out of shadow mode, because the two moves that are out of shadow mode that she can, I'm trying to think, the two moves out of shadow mode that actually activate status effects is her parry, which she can then use to land her 100%, or her, um, or her quarter circle forward twice special. So, yeah, random status effect equals you die. She has a parry, shadow mode, very great normal than her normal stance. I honestly gotta say, Oichi is probably the best character in this game. That after after five after after five years of the game being played, and that I really think that infinite aside, infinite aside, that like I said, that the noble Naga style is still a thing because if you have a character and all he has to do is power up, and then you get dash cancel normal till you die and you've lost a round, that's fine. You erase all that, and you take a look at her too, she could be the best character in this game. Because of how her status effects work, and all that other craziness that come with playing with a character like Oichi. And like I said, Nagamasa is pretty much useless outside of landing her other, 
outside of landing her infinite because like because now you know not only can she kill you outright but she has an infinite where she can fall for time until time's over see the more options you have to kill your opponent that's the thing thank you KG Mater and his engine Toshi made a monster. Here's the thing about KG. KG is a weird character because you would pick KG, look at his sprite, and think like, yo, he's gonna be a character that's suited for zoning. That's not true. Most of his moves, especially when charged up, and we'll talk about that in our gameplay portion, is that most of his moves when charged up actually bring the opponent back to him. Also, given when he summons Matsu, when she summons Mold, which is a very cute and awesome engine attack, by the way, is that she summons Mold, and that at mid-screen, depending on the level, I'm not actually at any level, but she summons more Mold as she, as she gets up higher in level, and they bounce stuff back to Keiji, which leads into all of his other moves, which are mostly rushdown attacks. He has, like... A projectile where he throws his um, where he throws his staff in the air, like in an arc or whatever, which is good for, which because it has like a very quick startup, so it's good for like catching for like catching like um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> for catching and for catching cats off the air with it. But a lot of his attacks are really are really suited around using his attacks from from damn near full range zone from from a full range zone to get in to do rush down attacks. And learning that is key is this understanding is that you have to work your way in. Is that you can rush down, but a lot of his normal, a lot of his actual rush down attacks and normal don't have very quick startups. So they get beat out by quicker moves like characters like Yuki Mori. So you just have to know when to set up that offense, when to get in, and then lay on that punishment after that. Because after that, he has a lot of moves good for that rush down game and stuff like that. But then the other thing I do want to mention, because this is probably the perfect time to mention it, because he's only the one of the few characters that it actually affects, is that the PS2 version is different from the arcade version, because some of the some of the properties of attacks have changed from the arcade version to the PS2 version. KG had a couple of attacks in the PS2 ver in the in the arcade version that actually did guard that actually put you in a guard break state, but in the PS2 version, don't. I don't quite get why that is, but it is a thing. And I just wanted to let you know that there are differences between the PS2 version and the arcade version. Which makes me wish they had a Nest Cross Live version to fix this stuff, which I actually thought there was one at one point, but then I figured out there wasn't. So, you know, there's your other history fact for today. Shoko Sabe Moto Chico. Now, Mono Shiga is not only an awesome pirate who wears pink, but also is one of our is one of the three characters in this game who has a who has a has a, a unique in-game property. Is that Mono Chica has not one, not two, but three different ingas in which he can summon. See where I'm going with this? Learning which of his three engines to summon, when and where, why and how, is key to learning the character. Because he has a very weird infinite. Well, not a weird infinite as it is the way to set up. Because there are certain dubs, every character in the game has a special, which is done quarter circle back twice and the heavy button where you can where you can during it with the right and correct timing you can call out your engine to do additional attack in motor chicken's case is that you can perfect guard the animation that happens while his engine is whooping the shot of you and then at the end of it with correct timing of letting go your perfect guard you can then start a launcher and then you know carry them to infinity and beyond like you blood like you're my nigga this is a thing that is happening right now it's a thing that is the key to the character is that not the key to the character in that is that you have to understand Moro Chica has awesome tools at worst down range 
awesome too. Has a lot of has some has some very great zoning tools too. Has some he actually has a move that is actually a come like technically a teleport that's an attack, but not a teleporting attack. Just think the just think bison, you know, with no invisibility on shit. Because it's the same thing because he actually skates on his, his anchor and has fire behind it and it's like an attack that he can do stuff off of that he can either do like a he can, I think he can do either a fake a, um, a fake an overhand I think it's a fake it's, it's a fake out an overhand and a normal attack and that, and that one move is key to his whole offense because he can get in and out of any situation at his will if you not do it for him. but to get back on what I'm talking about his anger is that like I said, he has three angles. I'm trying to think what the names of them are because I can't think of on top of my head. Come on, get him. It's the it's the it's his, his his level one is the neo tank. The level fifty is the wooden giant, and the level one hundred is the dragon tank. And is that his other thing because he's a special awesome character? Is that as he does damage, certain moves of his actually give him go, and he pays. His homeboys in the background to go off screen and go build me some shit to go beat somebody else ass with. Now that's that's awesome. I can't I can't even get mad at that at all. Can't get mad at that at all. So I guess in the roundabout way, this is what I'm trying to say to you. Mo Tochika has awesome options. Learning those options and in combination with learning what Indian does what and what you can do and what you can do in the best way to gain money to summon them is off. And then on top of that, he technically breaks his own economy is that if you have like certain levels, you can actually summon Ingen, you can actually summon Ingen after the round is over before you get into your win animation and summon Ingen for free, which completely breaks his whole economy and the whole thing that keeps the character balanced allegedly. You're one of the best characters in the game, and you know, all you have to do is just break the economy of the game and have a whole bunch of awesome brush down moments. And that's that. Mori Motonari. <sighs> the thing that I maybe should have mentioned with Mota Chica, which would probably serve me better mentioning it as I talk about Mori, is this. We talked about endings, and the way endings work, as we, as I'll make sure to take care of and talk to you about in our gameplay portion, is that endings level up from level 1 to level 100, and they have properties in between and stuff like that, and we'll get into that too, is that Mori's ending gauge fills up faster. Motor Chica right behind him, and the character right below Motor Chica, which is Honda, Tanakasu Honda, we'll talk about him in a second, there's a third, and then the rest of the cast flows somewhere in the dynamic between. I have no idea if someone ever documented, but I know three who Ingen fills up the fastest after that. So I'm not really sure. So I don't have any information on that. I kind of wish I did because, you know, I kind of just wish I did just for, you know, for the sake thereof. But hopefully it's somewhere on the internet and someone can tell me this information if I go ask. Anyway. The reason why this is so important when we talk about Mori is that his whole game revolves around that he can summon a whole bunch of his homeboys at once. Is that when I was doing my initial research, I remember reading that he can summon a certain number of people before his end gauge runs out, but it doesn't exactly work that way. I don't know if it's that way in the arcade, but at least in the PS2 version, for my plan with him is that he has six possible ending calls that he can use and that steadily drain the gauge. And I think, and from, from the way it looks to me as I look at the gauge as I'm summoning a whole bunch of dudes, is that each one of his ending calls uses some part of the gauge. So his ending gauge not only, his ending not only works different, but the way his ending gauge works. Because usually when you call out an ending, it's usually set between curses is that if you're a level 1, you're able to call the Ingen once. If you're a level 50, you're able to call the Ingen twice, and if you're a level 100, you're able to call him three times. Mori somehow, because he can summon all his homies, completely breaks this whole mechanic, which makes him one of the dangerous members in the cast, and for a very long time, considered the best character in the game, whether infinite or heads up. 
The downside to all of this, if you can call it the downside, which is something they straight took from the game, is that Mori can attack the dudes he summons and use them as projectiles against his characters, which technically gives him a whole bunch of characters he can fling at them, which gives him, he gives him a full range zone by some by sacrificing all his homies. Given the fact that this is something you can do, combined that he can summon people all day long, which also has something to do with landing his infinite, because you know we're all about landing infinites here. That's what we're about, because remember, high level play, infinite, illegal, such and such. Other than that, Mori has decent tools. It's like, he's, it's like, a lot of it, uh, like, if I want to put you in the mind of a character that, you know, that reminds me of, kind of reminds me of Trish from Marvel. Is that, like, like a lot of stuff he can set up, like, traps and stuff, like, peekaboos and such. Like, he can set them up in different ranges of the game. And, like, unlike Trish, where it traps them, Mori's attacks bounce them all over the place. So it sets up for weird juggle opportunities. And a lot of this combined with I can summon 50 of my homies at once, bounce them all over the place, which then sets up for an infinite where you're bouncing across the screen for, like, 80 seconds. And I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I will, just to make sure to cover my base, is that every time he attacks one of his homies, his engine gauge goes down a level. But once he breaks the, what am I trying to say? Once he breaks, because we'll talk about that in the gameplay portion too. Once he breaks the level, which gives him additional engine calls, which makes his bar, which makes his gauge bigger, he's able to still summon that many, but he'll just be at a lower level doing it. But you know, but this is something like I say that I will demonstrate in the gameplay portion. But I just want to make sure that I covered that information in that base. If I didn't do it already, I can't play that. Anywho, Tadakasu Honda and his engine, Yasu Todogawa. Here's the problem with this, and you know, I'm just going to be for real. Just straight up with y'all. If this was any other fighting game where the meta game would play at high levels didn't include infinite, Honda would be a decent character with a couple of little quirks because he has no infinite technically but he does have one in training mode given that he and Oichi are the only characters in the game that can pull off the such feat that I'm about to talk to you about he's the worst character in the game this is a game that I have to remind you again where the best character on paper in high level where infinite or legal all he has to do is press quarter circle back in the heavy button dash cancel with normal and you die if you can't dash dash to normal or die or set up for an infinite to protect yourself then you're in trouble that's how the problem he's a he's a walking hitbox but the thing is is that for all of his awesome tools, which all of them require zoning, which, just, which means laying bombs all over the place and doing full screen normals, and I really mean full screen normals as I say the word full screen normals, if that's a thing. The other problem is Yasu. Because Honda is enabled to access all of his abilities, which includes dashing a whole bunch because he has a boost gauge. You're learning on your own, play with the character is that every now and then Iyasu will be kidnapped by ninja and then you have to be a bad enough dude to rescue George W. Bush or Obama or Crick Crick or whoever from the ninjas or whatever you're gonna do and you should see all the air quotes that I'm using here but Honda has normal and special that actually hidden to the background so this is the only way to free Iyasu if you are so concentrated on the fight and not recognizing that at your engine gauge there's someone screaming please help me from the ninja that's kidnapping me please dog and you'll lose all your abilities because when Iyasu becomes available for Honda to use it gives his, it gives his, his attack additional abilities like he's able to he's able to actually do flight mode this was in the arcade mode in, 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 not in the arcade, but in the arcade version, is that Iyasu was key for him getting flight mode. In the 
in the PS2 version, they changed that he's able to do flight mode, but his boost gauge runs down faster if the Yasu isn't available. Is that that everything that Honda needs to do to be competitive, he needs to keep track of Yasu at all times. Even though Yasu, Yasu's engine ability is for him to summon her mind corn cubulate bitch. Because, you know, that's a thing you do. But, yo, like I said, if this was another fighting game where at high level, if it niche were legal, Honda would be a decent character. But because the only thing Honda brings to the table is a glitch that makes him completely, utterly freeze characters in place, which is illegal in tournament play, whether heads up or with infinite allowed. This makes you the worst character in the game, because the thing that would make you the best character in the game, by setting up for something that will completely immobilize your opponent for however many seconds, now you can't do it because it ain't legal, dog. It's just that for a character with such a cool thing, with, with a lot of cool abilities and a, and a lot of quirks with Iyasu as his engine, it's just that he's just in the wrong video game. If there was a sequel, I could see, I could see our system works, working through all of this to make Honda a more competitive and a better character. But in the game that he's currently stuck in now, he is the bottom of the barrel because everybody else can do something that he cannot. Oh, one more thing before I forget, before we get to our next character. Honda, however, given all that stuff I just said about him, is the only character in the game that can actually super cancel then that can super cancel into another suit. So you would do his quarter circle back to heavy special into his quarter circle forward twice special, heavy special or whatever. But yeah, he's the only character in the game because he does like a super electric field or something like like he's like a straight Gundam for real and then does a drill. Cause you know, they call him Han Dam. You know, that's the reason. Han Dam. It's the new day or whatever, but ignore me. Anywho. Kitchen is Sugi and Kasuga, and not random select. Thank you, video game. Kitchen! I can safely open my mouth and say this. Hands up, if it's allowed, whatever, top five. Is that if you got Uichi, who probably is top, then you got Nobunaga floating around somewhere, you got Mori floating around somewhere, you got um Hideyoshi floating around in there somewhere. And, and Kishin, they probably top five. They're, between them, you can have some people who play the game a lot more than I do argue with, but those five cards are the top five and you can put them in any order you want. But there's a reason why Kishin is part of the heap of the cast. Well, it would be something like, I can freeze my opponent, which make him land, which makes it easier for me to land my many counters, which lead to my many high damage combos and infinites. Given also that Kasuga with that ass is an awesome engine because she can charge it and you and do and throw a whole bunch of kunai's at my opponent which lead to my many many infinite that enough for you kitchen has the tools to be anybody on this character select screen that what makes them top five that at any given day a high level kitchen player can get with anybody in this cast that's what makes him dangerous and like i said I would honestly think that Kasuga and Kishin, they have the best, some of the best synergy in the game because a lot of what gives Kishin his best stuff is stuff he can do alongside Kasuga. So if you're looking for a character with the tools to win a fight, Kishin can get the job done. I don't really think that I need to do anything else. And did I mention that? Yeah, I did mention that. Kasuga is the only engine in the arcade version who can charge, who can charge, who you choose engine special that you can charge. So I just want to listen that you know that information. And then we get to the PS2 character. My dog Kojiro. And the one not dragon as his assist, Masamune Gata. I know we talked about this earlier, so let's talk about it again. Remember we talked about her, and I told you that she is the only character in the arcade version who has a 
Meet the character they added to the game for the PS2 version with a 100% combo. But I really wouldn't expect anything less from a monster like Kojiro given his history in Sengoku Basara the video game. Here's the thing about Kojiro. Kojiro, if we include him, he's somewhere at the top half of the tier list. Because he has a whole lot of ability. A whole lot of a whole lot of hard hit normals. He even has a slaughter mode which is treated as a stance change and that he can flow from normal from normal stance to stance change and back and forth and do large damage combos, which includes an assist that he needs Dante with to do his 100 percent combo, but it don't really take a lot of setup. Ko Kojiro is one of the most dangerous characters in this cast. But the problem is, we don't see enough of high level play from him because he wasn't in the arcade version. If there was ever a reason for a sequel to Sengoku Basara Cross, this Kojiro would be the reason. He would get a little tweaking to make him a little more fair to fight the rest of the cast, but he'd still be a beast. Like I got the Kojiro just he got, like I said, like I told you, everything he can do from his normal slaughter mode, given given all of his normal, he just he just got the options to win a fight. You you can't really say it any more clearer than that. He has the options to win a fight. He's just a monster, just a monster. I can't say any more than that. Beast. Remember you say that word all the time. I'm bringing it back. Told you all, beast, the end, thank you. Huh, it's Hanbei, and now Hideyoshi backing him up. The thing about Hanbei as a character is that he's a weird record character. And I say weird record character as is that a lot of his normals hit multiple times. And they're not hit multiple times like that, but they hit multiple times and you need to just learn like what moves juggle what knock down at what level do they hit and how they flow into each other Hideyoshi has his assist and the only reason I mention it is because it is kind of important is that Hideyoshi has his assist can actually be charged up at level 50 so even Kasuga can be charged up I think her assist can be charged up at any level but Hide um, Hideyoshi can be charged up at level 50 then at level 100 he gets he gets a um he gets a damage boost and it also and it also covers more of the screen. But you know I'm I'm, I'm okay I'm soft talking high baby. He he got some stuff and he got an infinite too. So every character in this game has some form of 100% or infinite except the one character in this game who has a whole bunch of zoning tools in a game that would be better if the high level play didn't include infinite. But if you play straight up, he's a little bit a better character. You know when it comes to tier listing. The game. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is your cast of Sengoku Basara Claw. So, let's get to the business and get to our gameplay portion. But one thing I do want to talk about in our gameplay portion is this. If you hold start, you get this. There is a reason behind this, but for the sake of actually teaching you the game is that understand that once you get used to playing the game you always want to be holding start and selecting your character and the gameplay portion will explain why just trust me on this but for now we won't use it but hell yeah baby you heard the man it's time to party I like how he thinks oh and that stuff just so you know is that the left side was was normal was normal gameplay mode and the blue side was if you go on the options you can set your um you can set the control config for any one of the four triggers to be any special move in the game so it makes it easier for people it's like an easy mode so you know so if you have people you want to play with good for my little cousins if i want to get them to play and go from the song and just because it is what it is yukimura it is and i love this music that's why we're selecting this stage 
I was going to select another stage for our gameplay portion, but you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. So, it's a thing. Oh man, I've been talking for 44 minutes. 44, 45 minutes. That is a thing. So I'm going to take a second and I'm going to relax and I'm going to wish I would have made me a cup of water before we did the things that we do, which include me explaining all to you. And I'm waiting for my PS2 to load this stuff. Man, I wish this worked on my PS3. I really do. But that's another conversation for another day. But let's pause the game for a second. And let's unpause it. Welcome to the battle screen, everybody. And we just gonna get into quickly explaining everything that you need to know. I'm gonna do a little damage to Yuki Moore. I actually a whole lot of it because I need to explain that to you. Is that that's your health bar as you see. And as you see, is that kind of like in Vampire Savior, is that you do damage and then you do damage that can be healed. Not only is that damage can be healed by standing still for a couple of seconds, but there's another defensive way we'll get into later on of how you can do it. Below that, that's the blue bar, that's your guard bar. You don't really see too much of that outside of an attack that actually use portions of the guard bar. Below the guard bar is one of the, the most important things you need to keep up with at all times in Sudoku Bazaar Cross, the end engage, and we'll get more into that later. Down at the bottom, you have your engine meter which slowly fills up to level one as you stand there and I'm gonna build up a meter and that circle is actually what it actually as you do stuff because actually let me uh wait because I'm gonna do stuff and as you see little numbers and letters and stuff that you do fill up that bar and if you fill it up enough you're able to do a one hit kill we'll actually describe one hit kills and how they actually work later but for now Let's actually get to work. If you're playing on an arcade stick, the button configuration is similar to better, the better versus game that came out last generation at Sakonoso vs. Capcom, if you are keeping, because light, medium, heavy, and the engine button, which I'm not going to press yet because it's important I don't press the button yet. So it's, so it's actually a four button sequence. So you got your three attacks and then you got your engine button at the bottom on the bottom of that, just so you know. You, you can walk forward and backwards and stuff, you can back step, you can front step and stuff like that. Of course you hold back to block. You got jump, you got double jump by jumping while in the air. You got some, you got a back dash and a forward dash in the air. Q. By pressing forward in the heavy button, you can throw somebody. Because this game is a game that's come out since, um, you know, Night, Night Warriors Dark Stalkers event is this game has changed. Low, medium, heavy. You can also throw crouching normals and stuff like that in between, but, but some of those actually have to link. But in, in Dante's case, which is one, two, three, three, down, four, just like that. Oh, well, let me do this real quick. So he has infinite meter because you can actually kill somebody in training mode. We're only going to need to do that one. Anywho, you also have this forward and medium, which is actually, which is not quite a universal overhead because it can be blocked. But just to, just to show you, let me put it on crouching. This attack, when it when it hits a crouching opponent, knocks down. When it hits a standing opponent, knocks down too. But it hits crouching, but it hits crouching and up an opponent, and you do that with forward and the medium button. Any down direction plus the medium and heavy button doesn't do that. Does a launcher. You also press down in the heavy button and you get what, what they what they actually call in the Japanese website an aerial spike. It, it's supposed to be uh it's supposed to be more it's supposed to be what it actually is is actually a combo ender for attacks that actually hit in the air. This is your blow away attack. You do that by pressing medium and heavy at the same time. Maybe I should have did this first. And you press anywhere towards your opponent to pursue, even in the air. So you can press up forward and then pursue. But you know, some characters actually use actually use that ability to actually start their infinite and stuff. Let me actually turn on guard because this is going to be important. 
If you do that normally, you can guard it. You do it when it flashes. Once they hit the wall, you can do this. This is also, that's also key to a couple of infinite picks, so you'll want to keep that in mind. So just to make sure that you can do it normally, or you can do it after you charge and then let it go after that. Anytime after you see your character flash, it's the same thing. It's not like focus attack with Street Fighter where you have three levels. It's either you do this, or you do that. One or the other. It's either, blo it's either blockable, or you're going to pursue, and it's going to end up as an unblockable once they hit the wall. Get the defensive side of the ball, because I gotta do some setup here. So let me see, do I need anything in infinite stuff? Infinite stuff? Infinite stuff? Yeah, I can do that. I, 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 I can pull that off. Let me... Do a couple of normals, because this is the only way you can get the game to do what you want it to. Like that. Of course you guard by pressing back. I'm gonna let you do your thing, you boy. Guard you pressing back. But, as, as key as into any art system work game you ever played before, pressing pressing the um the lower medium button and back does a perfect guard. But as you see, just look again, it does drain your gaze. So remember that combo I talked about with um with Moto Chica is that you actually have to have enough gauge not only for the setup but to drain enough energy. And I think you need three and a half meters to start that infinite. So you know, just keep that in mind, just for a fun fact. Let me see. Let me see if I can get it. Okay, maybe. Okay, I'm. I'm, I'm actually use the um, actual attack on the game because you get a time on that. So. Okay, oh, I can't put myself on infinite meter because I actually. Let me see, hold on, let me make sure I can get it. As you see, you just saw it. I did not have to pause it to get away from you, Gamora. Is that, that's just defense. It's just defense just like in, um, in Garo and in Capcom vs. SNK2. And in this game, it is the thing that when you guard it at the perfect time, it actually fills up. It actually fills up your gauge. So it actually fills up your life gauge. So you will heal up any damage that in any damage that you would have recovered from the attack so any so in roundabout any any damage that attack would have done because you just because you just guarded it because you because you just guarded it will equal you getting that meter back and stuff like that oh I'm sorry. I didn't that. let me see if i can get this that was really that was late I don't know what that was. That wasn't it. Okay, this, this is embarrassing. Not that either. We gonna get it. That was really, I'm getting scared. Actually, let me do it, let me do it with, um, You do a couple, do a couple standing heavy. See, I don't believe I'm doing this. When I was practicing this, getting ready for this, it really didn't take this long. Well, let me see if I can actually do it off this. I mean, well, actually, I need to give myself infinite meter. Do some more damage. So, like, the kids gotta see this. Thank you. Hey, that was a just a fist when I paused the game. That's hilarious. And there it is. Took a whole bunch of setup, but that is a a just perfect guard which combines a perfect guard which it combines a perfect guard with a just effect what it does is that when it, ref it actually is a reflect 
for certain attacks. Let me actually turn off him doing all this attack. But not jumping in the air. Thank you. Is that what it does is that certain attack is fully reflecting and gives you a full range of flex. I don't know why I use that C because I know for a fact that that attack does not reflect. So that's a thing too. Oh yeah. Speaking of. Uh, wrong button. That is your, that, that is your guard break. Do you do that by pressing forward and medium and heavy and what it does is that you use um you use half of your guard gauge and, and it also costs and it also costs a, a, a meter of the star gauge to do so let's just demonstrate it one more time and just knock him down and as you see it's draining my meter if i do it again and it like and you see it slowly refilling if you do it it's kind of like um climate uh, um super climax or that if you do like if you do like a burst and you do it three times you fully that you you will fully empty your gauge and, you, and the next hit gonna be free and in a game where infinites are legal and high level in most cases, you don't want to put yourself in a situation like that at all. Let me see. What else is there? Oh, well, actually, let me record you can move it doing something. Oh, no, let me get a better combo. With your shoes and area spike. Thank you, sir. Let's start with this. Pressing any button in the air while you getting your ass beat in any direction will will let you recover in that direction. You can do it. Knock me down, please. Pressing up when being knocked down resolves in a quick get up. So you can recover in the air in any direction and if you get knocked down, you can do a quick get up. I don't think there's a delay get up in this game. So it's either, it's either quick get up or getting up normally. And now, the fun part of resetting the game because I need, you know, thank you. Welcome to England's in you. And let me turn on, let me turn on me anyway because I have a feeling I'm going to need it. Remember how we talked about and, you know, Triple the God explained it all to you part of this episode? Is that we talked about, as you see, as you see, we'll just look at you, you, you can more as an example, as you see, He's raising his level, and if as you sit up here in air, like I told you, when I told you with characters, is that every character fills up at a different rate. So, you know, I don't know why I pressed the select button on accident, but every character, actually, I'll demonstrate. And we'll see here, we'll see here and wait. As you see, Dante fills up just a little bit quicker than Yuki Mura does. And I just want to show that as an example. And if you take any character in the practice mode, you can sit up here and do it. But like I told you, it's Mori, Honda, and Moto Chica in that order. Those are the three that fills up the fastest. With Mori fills up the fastest. And I have no idea who fills out the lowest. So you know that is a thing. But let me actually put it on level one. And do not do that. And let's start over. Engines and you, everybody. As you see, anytime you request a ninja, is that they ride in on a horse, you know, and, you, and that level shows how quickly they get to you. The higher the level is, the longer it takes. Is that it, and engines are automatically summoned at level 100. Is that if you let it, if I was to sit up here and look, if I was to sit up here and let Yuki Moore get all the way to level 100, is that it would automatically trigger the engine being summoned and then he will be having full beat. But let's just talk about ingots for a sec. The awesome things I can do with my ingot. Now I just use I just use Totoro in a combo. You know, but look at how look at how long because of my at my lower level that I am that it took for me to recover and use Totoro again. But Let's take a look at a level 50. Now, as you see, I only used them one time. But, I can use them twice before he has to retreat into the background and I can't use them again. And what I think is kind of cool, just for a fun fact, is that Inga's in this game actually remind me kind of sort of of how Partner attacks work, and look, and look, and look, and you see, 
Yuki Mori, Yuki Mori just summoned this ink and then automatically got her in their side tail over there in the corner. And like I was saying before I was interrupted, ink in this game actually remind me of partner attack from the Orochi side of KOL, where your where your homies on the side, except you can call them at any time except when you're not getting your ass beat. So that's the thing. But like I said, just to show you, and I'll show you level 100. And as you see, not only is Kojiro doing multiple hits, it also has a thunder effect and doing more attacks. So, just so we can review, Kojiro in level 1. Kojiro at level 50. Kojiro at level 100. As you see, kid, Ingens are important to this to the meta game because, like I said, it's all about it's all about the synergy between playable character and Ingen. It's all a part of whether you're trying to land an infinite, whether you're trying to play the game straight up in any way, shape, or form. All of that is majorly key. Oh, and before I forget, you also get um, you also by pressing um down in the engine button, it actually does a launcher, and you can do fun stuff off of that too. It works the same as a normal launcher. It works the same as a normal launcher, and I'm just going But you have to let the end game fully hit first, and then stuff like that. Here's the other thing. Remember how we talked about earlier about how when you hold start and you get the another thing? This is where it comes in key. And I'm just going to, you know, record a C or two. Now, watch this. Pressing the end game button when you are attacked allows you to do an ink encounter this costs you for for however for each time you do it because i'll do it again just to show you as you see it cost me a bit more meter to pull it off that time i'll i'll wait for i'll wait for coach Rose to refill his energy again before i do it but i want it but i want to show you something now Coach Rose at level 43, right? If I call him out, it's still like he's at level 100. Except he's only doing what he can by doing his level 1 attack. He can do it three times because he's not at level 50. The other thing is, is that, is that, here's the thing. I'm going to do it one more time. As you see, it took more meter to do it that time. And I will let the energy, I'm going to let the energy gauge refill one more time because I want to get it all the way back down to level one just so you know that we just come full circle on it. Reduces you all the way down to level one. And I'm going to get all of that back and I'm going to get myself to level 100. Just to make my point. And there we go. So... That is this game in a nutshell. And oh, and I forgot. That, that was supposed to be making the whole point about ingots and stuff. Is that when you hold start and get the another, is that the reason why you want to learn to play the game that way? Is because it changes the ingot counter from just pressing the ingot button to pressing up any up direction in the ingot button in order to activate it. So you don't actually accidentally traipsed over the engine button and you use three meters for no reason but there is one more thing we got to end into all this smackdown we've been laying all day has built up that magical little ball in the corner i can now do a one hit kill by pressing a b and c you activate a limited gauge and and then you do that shit Start, start, start! I don't want them to see. I can't see because see, I'm gonna get in trouble. Cause see, they they play that song we're not supposed to talk about that YouTube won't let me collect ad money on. But one more time.
Oh, hold on, play, hold on, let me, let me, because I think, I, cause I think I can't do it off of an end gun assist. Yep, I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah, throw your hands in the air, six swords and all that. Yo! That is the Goku Bizarre Cross, you guys. This game is so fun, it's so sick. I hope that you guys watching this video today, I hope you guys get amped to want to play the game for yourself. The game is pretty cheap to get off eBay at this point. I'm surprised that it hasn't been a PS2 Classic, so that you can get your hands on it in a more, in a more, you know, honest way. That you can get it and play it or whatever. But this game is so cool. I really enjoyed it. I continue to enjoy it. And I'm glad, I'm hoping to be able to be able to start you off on an awesome quest to play an awesome fight. If you think me covering the Goku Pasar Cross or something, yo, it's going down. I got something for y'all next month. And the month following that. Be sure to stay tuned. The cool, every Monday, we going down. DOA Jace the Dojo. Forever serving, we do what we do. With that being said, I'd like to thank every single one of you, you guys, to sit here for 60 for 66 minutes and talk about the Goku Bazaar Cross with your boy. I'm, I hope you've learned something. I hope that you want to pick up an awesome new fighter, you know, which will quell your thirst until you know next whatever game. Cause what fighting game is next anyway? I think that's Blaze Blue in March. I think yeah, I think that is Blaze Blue in March. I think is the next fighting game in America. I, I, pl I played enough Kokonoe and you know I don't know what y'all banned in Kokonoe. That's not like some hoe shit for me. But but you know, but that's what y'all bought that hoe shit anyway, but give me for saying that. But I'm out of here. I'm done. Um you know who I am, you know, best in existence, the best in the business. Game is number one dope man, triple the G O D. Um this is of course your other 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 favorite YouTube show. Triple Duck Guy explained it all. And I will holler at you guys next time, man. Peace out.